like to welcome everyone uh, to this Broken People series. Um, and today we're talking about hindrances to salvation, the hindrances that uh, might be there in our lives as far as us becoming Christians, becoming saved. And perhaps the, the biggest hindrance that um, people and all people everywhere really, really struggle with. And I'll give my testimony to I struggled with the same. Yes. That's something that a whole heap of people really, really struggle with, is unforgiveness. So we're going to look at uh, three things. The example of God himself. Um, through, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, the warning that goes with unforgiveness, and of course the command to forgive. Let's take a look then at our first scripture, Second Chronicles chapter 7, and we're reading from verse 14. Uh, and it's uh, the Lord God speaking to Solomon after he's dedicated the temple, uh, finished making the temple and the royal palace. So verse 14, and this is God speaking to Solomon. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Great promise. That's a promise that God will forgive, even though we've sinned against him. Psalm 86 verse 5. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Abounding in love to all who call to you. And again, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through to 15. And uh, Jesus' disciples have asked him to teach him, teach them how to pray. And in verse 9, the Lord Jesus says, This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts, our trespasses as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And then some translations, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. But here in the, and I'm reading from the New International Version, right after verse 13, but deliver us from the evil one, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Which, of course, is very, very serious. And, of course, that's a warning. Just like Matthew chapter 18, which is where we're going now. It's how serious our Lord Jesus considered to unforgiveness to be. He... Um, tells a story, and it's verse, uh, chapter 18 of Matthew, verse 21. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 70 times seven, or in this version, 77 times. Could be translated either way. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold, 10,000 talents was the weight, uh, was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, 
he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt, and let him go. Now what size debt is 10,000 bags of gold? What size debt is 10,000 talents of gold? Mm. Millions of dollars. Maybe even hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm. And he says, have patience with me and I'll pay you back. Well, there was no way that the servant would ever mm. pay that kind of money back. But, notice the master had pity on him, cancelled that huge debt and let him go. But then, when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins, a hundred denarii, a hundred days' wages, three months' wages. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as, he, as I had on you? And in anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. And this is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. We're talking very serious business when we're talking unforgiveness. So we have the command. 18 verse 35. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. In other words, that's really a command. Forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Uh, in Matthew 6, uh, it also says the same. Um, at the end of the Lord's Prayer, as we read. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So really, that's the command again, isn't it? To forgive. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Any of us who have lived for any length of time have been wronged. You can probably think of someone right now who has wronged you for whatever reason. It might be someone you don't even know. But the ones that hurt the most are the ones that wrong us, that are the closest to us, generally. Family or friends who have done us wrong. And that really stings because that we don't expect it from them. I just want to give my own testimony. When I was younger, I was just in year 12 at school. We called it the sixth form back in those days. And I'd done my university entrance. And a result came back for English that was rock bottom which surprised me, because if you didn't get English in those days, you didn't go on to the seventh form, you didn't go on to year 13, quite different from today. And I remember my dad being really, really disappointed, and uh, I said, well, I could go for a recount. And my dad turned his back on me, and as he turned his back on me, he said, well, what's the use? And he walked away. Now, I interpreted that as rejection from my dad. It was disappointment more than anything because his other two sons had passed everything up to that stage. But um, I felt rejected. What I did then was the worst thing I could do. 
I said in my head, well, if you reject me, I'll reject you. Now, over the following week, I found I was just talking to my dad, as I usually do. And then catching myself, thinking, no, I'm supposed to be rejecting him. Mm -hmm. You see, unforgiveness didn't come naturally to me. That wasn't part of my makeup up, up till then. But by the end of the week, that had settled in place. And so I kept that for the next five years. Three words. Three little words. And I harboured resentment toward my dad because of that. Now, prior to this, when I was 12, 13, 14, I had a really, really lovely walk with God. I knew that my prayers were getting through. His love was showered upon me. I knew that I had that walk with the Lord. But when I did that and clung to that resentment, my fellowship with God was broken. It's like it says in, in the Psalms, you know, if you do this, your heavens will be brass and your earth will be iron. And that's where I was, in that place where you really don't want to be. And I remember going to various retreats where people would be praising the Lord and tears rolling down their faces just in the very presence of God and me right next to them like a lump of wood no emotion whatsoever. Now, I'd forgotten about that incident after five years, as you do, after four and a half years. And I remember talking to God. I said, God, it seems that you love everybody but me. But you've made a promise in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, that the one who endures to the end will be saved. So I'm going to grit my teeth and I'm going to endure to the end. But I couldn't. You can't stay in a state like that and try to endure to the end. After another six months or so, I said to God, Lord, if you don't break through to me somehow, if you don't break through, I'm just going to go off and please myself. I know there's, a, there's pleasure in sin, even if it's just for a season. But I'm getting no joy in this life, and I'm getting no joy from above. I can't, I can't go on like this. You need to break through. You need to show me. And then God opened my eyes. Remember back then, when you clung to that resentment. Oh, of course, of course. That's, that's where it began. That's where the, the heavens were closed. Well, I went to my dad. You see, I was at the torturers. It's exactly what... That is so accurate. My father will send you to the torturers. Well, that's where I was. Figuratively speaking, of course. But no joy. Can you imagine five years? No real joy in this life. There I was, at the torturers. Sure enough, I was locked up. And God showed me my problem. So I went to my dad. I said, Dad, do you remember when uh, this happened? When you said that, I harboured bitterness in my heart toward you. And I'm sorry about that. I, that should never have been. Now my dad, he's a thick-skinned Dutchman. You know what he said to me? He said, Mark, I never knew. Five years of harbouring this to my dad, and he didn't even know. Mm -hmm. Who was being hurt? Well, it was me, of course. <laughs> he didn't know. But he was sorry, of course, that that had happened. But I learned such a lesson there. You see, I harboured resentment over something that was that big. It was nothing. 
And I determined from that time on that that would never happen to me again. When I forgave my dad, the heavens were opened again. I knew that I had the relationship with God again. You know, it was open heaven, mm -hmm. absolutely open heaven. And I've had that ever since, been open heaven. Oh, that doesn't mean I don't sin. Do I ever, you know. <laughs> uh, but I know that my relationship with God is the father-son relationship. I'm, I'm his child. I know that. I've got absolute confidence that that is the case. I know the difference between not knowing God and knowing him. Uh, and I never want to be in a position where I, I do that again. Now, I've been hurt, I can think of a couple of times, quite seriously since then. And, but because of what I learned with my dad, I've never allowed a seed of bitterness to remain. Now, what do you do when that sort of thing happens to you? Jesus has given us a, a, a wonderful way to extract the thorn of hurt. And he says it in um, the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5 of Matthew. Matthew 5, verse 43. Still part of the Sermon on the Mount. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? The tax collectors, of course, were collecting taxes for Rome. They hated tax collectors and, and back in those days. <laughs> Maybe we still do. Though. Maybe we do. <laughs> Maybe we do. And if you greet your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Um, in another place, uh, Jesus says, Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who spitefully use you, and you'll be the sons of your uh, and daughters of your heavenly Father. Uh, what I determined to do was to bless those and pray for them. So, whenever um, the the incident or whatever it was that caused hurt came to my mind, I would say, "Oh yeah, Lord, please bless that person, bless their family." Just. Mm -hmm. Bless them um, out of their socks, you know. Um, Satan can't keep on pushing a thorn into your, into your heart when you're, every time he brings these thoughts along, you're blessing the person that you should be cursing, you know. And it's not long before, as I say, that thorn of hurt is removed from you. Uh, these people that perhaps unjustly... Um, uh, gave me grief, mm -hmm. I hold no grudge whatsoever. So that's my own testimony. It's, it, it's just a little one. I do want to read you the testimony of someone who you think, how on earth could this person ever forgive? And it's the, it's the testimony of a lady called Corrie ten Boom, Dutch lady. And during the war, when the Germans were occupying Holland, her family were hiding Jews, and they helped a lot of Jews um, to escape the concentration camps and, and the death camps. And this is her testimony. This is after the war now. She herself was sent to a uh, Ravensbrück, the uh, women's concentration camp, where her sister Betsy and she were um, she was there until the end of the war. Her sister Betsy died there. Her father also died um, not long after um, he uh, they discovered that they were they were uh, harboring Jews. So this is Corrie Ten Boom, uh, her testimony after the war. 
Some time ago, I was in Berlin. A man came to me who said, Miss Ten Bong, I'm glad to see you. Don't you know me? Suddenly I saw this man who had been one of the most cruel guards in our concentration camp. He said, I'm now a Christian. I've found the Lord Jesus. I read my Bible and know there is forgiveness for all the sins of the whole world, also for my sins. I have forgiveness for the cruelties I've done. But then I've asked God's grace for an opportunity that I could ask one of my very victims for forgiveness. And Fräulein Ten Baum, will you forgive me? And I could not. I remembered the suffering of my dying sister through the guard. And when I remembered that I could not forgive him, suddenly I knew that I myself had no forgiveness. Jesus said, when you do not forgive those who sin against you, my heavenly Father will not forgive you your sins. I knew I was not ready for Jesus coming if I had no forgiveness for my sins. But I was not able. I could not forgive. I could only hate him. And then I took one of those beautiful texts from the Bible, the love of God is shed abroad into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. That's Romans 5.5. 5. And I said, thank you, Jesus, that you have brought into my heart God's love. And thank you, Father, that your love is stronger than my hatred and unforgiveness. That same moment... I was free, and I could say to that guard, Brother, give me your hand. And I shook hands with him, and it was as if I felt God's love stream through my arms. You never so touch the ocean of God's love as when you forgive your enemies. Can you forgive? No, I can't either, but he can. It's an amazing testimony. You know? She lost her family, first of all because of a traitorous Dutchman, mm -hmm. uh, who she also wrote to to forgive, and then also she was able to see this guy, who had become a Christian, and forgive him. Mm -hmm. Just as well he came across her, because... If he'd come across any of his other victims, that, that mightn't have had the same result. Mm -hmm. But there's a, a, an example of forgiveness that is, well, a lot more serious than the little things that happen to most of us. Now, some, some people are terribly sinned against, as, as was Corrie ten Boom, and even in our society today. Mm -hmm. Some children have been terribly sinned against, you know, and they grow up with a burden of, well, often a mixture of hate and guilt. You think, why do you feel guilty when it's an adult that's been doing this to you? Um, and for, for them, it could be incredibly hard to forgive. But Jesus still calls us to forgive. Um, the Bible tells us that all of us have sinned, and we fall short of God's glorious standard. The Bible also tells us that these sins of ours earn wages. The wages for our sin is death. We find that in Romans 6.23. That's the first half of that verse. Then in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, the, tell, the Bible tells us God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So in a sense, we have caused the death of Christ, God's Son. Now God has every right to judge the wicked world ourselves included, because of our sin. Wages for sin is death. But he, Jesus came for that very purpose. 
to pay our wages that we could get off scot-free. And if he's done that for us, if he's paid, as the parable says, if Jesus has paid the 10,000 bags of gold that we could never pay, then we also have to release those people who, have, who owe us, no matter how big the wages. Um, so hindrances to salvation, unforgiveness is possibly the big one. Next time I'm going to talk about other hindrances, but perhaps this is the biggie for most people.